No, no, where there's input. Oh, I see what you're saying. I will take that suggestion into the General Assembly for you. Absolutely. Thank you. What's your name, sir? Jacob. Jacob. Thorin. Nice to meet you. Thank you for that suggestion. I'm going to put that in there, right? Thorin. T H O R I N. T A T H O R I N. Thorin. Thank you very much. That's a very good suggestion. And the other thing is, so this way we can all vote together on the internet. Are we going to march here? We are. Yeah, and we can't only have so many people here, but. The only issue with that would be, well, you know, we want people to not be you know, popcorn on the couch watching. We want people to participate in that. But no, yeah. those people are doing their job where they are. That is true. They're yes. spreading the truth. They're getting the water. They're at full time. Oh, I guess we are not see. Okay. Yeah. Right, actually, just to speak maybe a little louder because the noise around us. Yeah, of course, okay? All right, we have a special interview for you guys. I'm going to let him introduce himself and why he's here and uh, whatever else he has to say to get off his chest or just let us know about certain things. Take it away. My name is Barrett Brown. I'm the founder of Project PM. Uh, I used to write for Vanity Fair, some other publications, still write for a couple others. Uh, back in February, uh, some people with Anonymous uh, struck back against a company called H.B. Gary Federal, which is one of these intelligence contracting firms. Uh, an industry which has expanded in power and influence quite a bit behind the scenes in the past 10 years. Uh, this, 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 this industry now does about estimated 40% of... Oh, the rest audio, hold on. Okay. All right, everybody, how are we doing? Can you hear us? Everything good? All right, we're good now. Go ahead. Go on. This, I guess, this all over. Cool. Well, again, my name is Barrett Brown, and... Uh, for the past few months, I've been investigating with a number of other people from Anonymous and elsewhere the intelligence contracting industry. And this began again in uh, February when Aaron Barr, CEO of HB Gary Federal, announced to the press that he had discovered Anon's alleged leadership. So the next day, a couple uh, people with Anonymous uh, hacked their servers and in the process took 70,000 emails uh, from that company you know, between you know, inner correspondence and between them and dozens of other firms in that industry. Uh, those 70,000 emails, you know, very first, the media did a good job of looking into them and very quickly found that H.P. Gary Federal, along with another company called Palantir and another company called Barrico, had been offering their capabilities, which are uh, designed generally for, for the use by a government intelligence community. Uh, they were offering these capabilities to private firms, such as Bank of America and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Bank of America uh, had been asking around about going after WikiLeaks uh, in a clandestine fashion. The Justice Department itself actually recommended that Bank of America go to a law firm called uh, Hutton and Thompson, uh, which is sort of a, a very powerful uh, lobbyist firm that, that seems to also uh, specialize in dirty tricks campaigns. Uh, what they were, what what H. B. Gary and these other companies were planning for Bank of America at their beh at their behest was a campaign against WikiLeaks, by which they would launch cyber attacks and uh, also try to promote internal dissension. A uh, campaign against major supporters of WikiLeaks, including Glenn Greenwald, the journalist for uh, Salon, and the former New York civil litigator. And for U.S. Chamber of Commerce, they had they were setting up a plan by which to uh, acquire intel on members of various left-wing groups opposed to the chamber including uh, Code Operation Pink, Code Pink, and uh, a number of others. So this all made the press for a little while, and that was swell. But then after, after you know, a few weeks, the press decides that something is no longer newsworthy because time has passed, even though there's all these other emails sitting there waiting to be looked at. So about a month later, someone else finds that H.P. Gary Federal had been bidding on a program in the U.S. Air Force uh, called Persona Management. And this is software that will allow a single person, in this case, to control 10 fake people, complete with online biographies that are all manufactured, and also with software assisting in the conversations uh, in real time, such that they don't have to, they don't have to, uh, you know, a person doesn't have to remember all these details of all the conversations he's had as these fake people with other people. And after this was discovered, uh, CENTCOM admitted that it was for them, and they're operating at a US, uh, U.S. Air Force's, Air Force bases uh, jointly conducted Hero. with CENTCOM. And, uh, and that uh, you know, this was used as part of Operation Earnest Voice, which is basically a disinformation and uh, surveillance uh, campaign run by U.S. and unspecified multinational forces. 
So that's one thing. And of course, they claimed that they would never use this on Americans because that would be against the law. Of course, about two days after that sitcom made that assertion, Michael Hastings of Rolling Stone came back from Afghanistan and reported that a three-star general had ordered a U.S. PSYOPs team to use PSYOPs on visiting U.S. senators. What that shows us is that no matter what, whether it's illegal or not, some faction of the military or intelligence complex or some other company or some other government facet will use these things against U.S. citizens. The other worry is that we, we know that these same companies that are already uh, so lucratively uh, providing these services to other major U.S. companies and, and other governments around the world, presumably, uh, are the same companies that are developing some of these capabilities, which very few people know about and which are only going to get more effective as all these companies compete as well for the contracts on it. So persona management itself, the implications there being that you know, we've seen a few patents uh, you know, from 2007. We, we have a few clues as to the civic aspects. But overall, it's something that's, go that's going to keep evolving until you have one person can even more automatically, thanks to improved software, control you know, 100, 500 people uh, that all seem to be real and which all seem to be expressing opinions about events. Uh, those of us who've been around the anonymous movement for a while, in particular, uh, know all too well how effective it can be to uh, to be able to manufacture that kind of uh, manufacture events, manufacture opinions, uh, present a false view of reality, and otherwise uh, uh, misinform and, and, and mess with the, ear, the information flow. So that's something we're still investigating. Again, there's tens of tens of thousands more emails that we're going through. We, we found other programs, including one called Romas Coin, which we released a report on uh, a couple uh, two months ago, and which involves uh, not only all HP Gary but all these other companies uh, competing for a U.S. contract for this massive surveillance system that also puts out information in some unspecified way we're not sure about, which involves mobile apps, and which Apple and Google met with these companies about getting involved in. So. That's something that needs to be brought attention to. No matter how, no matter how ethical these, the executives of Google and Apple and other other telecom companies think they are, the fact is that whatever capabilities they're providing from their extraordinarily, uh, you know, important pool of capabilities, they're going to be used in ways that, in ways that you know, they have no control over. They're going to be used and distributed by more of these companies, which themselves are less, much less ethical than Apple and Google are. No matter how ethical those companies actually are. And within the next five, ten years, you're going to see a, a great deal of improved capabilities by powerful, uh, powerful entities by which to misinform, uh, disseminate nonsense, and uh, protect themselves. So that's something that not just activists, but all, all populations everywhere need to start learning about, need to start reacting to. Awesome. And that's my spiel right there. That's a spiel, and I'm going to have some questions for you, okay? All right, great. All right. You have about 6,000 people watching. All right, guys, ask some questions. I'm going to pause it and filter through them. Give me a second. If you post any links, I'm banning you for five minutes. All right, here we go. Okay, somebody's asking. I don't know if you know any information, but there's been... um. Rumor about a Facebook attack? Is that true? There, 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 there was there was some anons a while, a number of months ago, who first planned uh, attack on Facebook. Uh, and my understanding is, and I wasn't really involved in that at all. Uh, my understanding is that they kind of originally thought it up and then sort of left it alone, forgot about it, and then some press somewhere uh, saw the remains of whatever they put together in that planned attack and started reporting on it. Uh, I mean, there's obviously, and there's a lot of anons who, having heard that. Uh, themselves think it's going to be a Facebook attack and who might, as a result, try to carry one out. Uh, but it's not something I'm not particularly interested in. Uh, you know. um, what are the ways that military contractors and intelligence gathering companies can influence in politics and how can we fight against it? Uh, there's several ways, some conventional and some otherwise. The conventional ways is that we have a revolving door between the military, uh, U.S. intelligence, and these contracting companies. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Archimedes Systems, Archimedes Global, which is one of the most uh, interesting, uh, from our view, of these firms, which puts together a lot of, uh, you know, frankly, capabilities whose only purpose is to put out this information. Uh, and you have, you know, you have, a, you have a former lieutenant general, uh, lieutenant uh, colonel from the Air Force, you know, who's on the board of directors, and that's something that's very common throughout the industry. 
and you know they also worked very closely with, with the intelligence counter industry. So there's kind of this informal alliance and a sort of a buddy network uh, in place. Uh, and the effect is that you know at, at, at in March, early March, after the U.S. Congress had learned of all these things that Anonymous had exposed regarding Team Themis and, and the campaign to go after WikiLeaks, so, you know, at, at Bank of America, uh, Representative Johnson called for a congressional inquiry. Representative Lamar Smith, the Republican of Texas, shot it down, saying it was the Justice Department's role to investigate if a crime has been committed or not. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that it was the Just Justice Department itself that recommended Bank of America go to Hunt and Williams when they were looking for a way to go after WikiLeaks. So, Justice Department, it's not surprisingly, has not investigated very thoroughly, and that's why we have to. So that just shows the extent to which, no matter what we can uncover, you know, no matter what wrongdoing uh, we, we catch them dead to rights at, Congress is going to be not going to be helpful. You know that these these firms have lobbyists; they did a lot of money, and we have no money. We can't get our we can't influence congressmen to investigate. We have to uh, what we have to do is work with the media because of that, and to uh, otherwise do whatever needs to be done to ensure that attention is brought to this matter. Uh, and then beyond those those sort of orthodox traditional you know uh, power politics systems you have there, you also have these companies themselves have access to some of the best and some of the most little known capabilities by which to get their message out on the sly. Uh, that's that itself is a problem that to, to the extent that, that if, 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 it, if, it, if it seems to them as it's starting to that they're sort of under assault uh, in so much as the attention's being drawn to them, uh, they could easily deploy disinformation campaigns better than any you know than most anyone else could manufacture. So that's another problem, and also, you know, all anyone who pays for them, again, and these other companies who have need for that thing, and apparently a lot do, uh, will also have access to its capabilities. So things are about to get harder for us, except to the extent that we strike back at them first. Awesome. Uh, they want to know your name again, and uh, website if you have a website as well. My name is Barrett Brown. Uh, the main website we're using is uh, it's a wiki called Echelon 2. If you just look up. Uh, you look up uh, persona management. If you look up in-game systems, I forget the exact URL. Basically, it's, it'll be the top result for those. If you go to in-game systems, uh, one of the one of the great things we've been able to do is is make it such that anyone looking into some of these companies, uh, the first result they're going to get if they look for them is our page on it, spelling out everything they've done wrong, and uh, spelling out all these things that used to be, you know, their trade secrets. So that's that's one of the positive effects we've managed to. Uh, to accomplish, in addition to other stuff we do with working with journalists to make sure they have the right information and the proper backgrounds to effectively, you know, do their fucking jobs. Um, someone said, do you think this protest is too peaceful? Too peaceful? Uh, I'm going to play the fifth on that one. Okay. Why not account uh, Is anyone in the government trying to stop the creation of fake profiles to curb opinion. I'm sorry, what? Uh, is anyone in government trying to stop the creation of fake profiles to curb opinion? You know, I think there's probably, there's definitely a couple of congressmen that know about the problem, uh, like Representative Johnson, but they, they, they are incapable themselves unless they're able to convince others that it's in their interests, which it's not, uh, to do anything from their end. So again, that, that's why you know, the last couple of years, I think a lot of people have learned a lot about how to best make, make take advantage of people's uh, efforts and times in order to most effectively, you know, to, 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 to accomplish something, you know, to, to get back at the enemy. And a lot of the, I think a lot of the best techniques involve crowdsourced investigations. Uh, Project PM, which is the group I founded, which uh, works with Anonymous from time to time, uh, what we have, we have an IRC uh, channel. You can come to irc.project-pm.org. And uh, we've got about 30 people in there at any given time, some of whom are going through the emails and we're, and we're you know, just, uh, trying to discern what we can from all the information sources that we've acquired over the past seven or eight months in order to, to solve these puzzles and then get it out. Uh, and I think that's the kind of thing that other groups need to start thinking about. Uh, starting small, 15 to 20 people, little groups that meet regularly on IRC, they're always there, and, uh, and finding a data set uh, just effectively just loosely looking through that data set and then designating somebody to talk to journalists and make sure that information is is, is easy to acquire is easy to, easy to, easy to come uh, to come to uh, by traditional journalists while also you know using non-traditional information means and that's one of the things I'd like to see as we go forward over the next couple of years.
Someone asks, how long will the people stay? If I leave next week to come down here, will the people still be here? I don't know. Time will tell. You know, there's a lot of people who put a lot of energy into this, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of them. Uh, you know, a lot of people, other people have really put this we together. We do not plan on leaving. What? That's basically, we do not plan on leaving. We plan to stay here for as long as we can, which we feel is a very long time. So come on down. If you can't make it, check uh, OccupyTogether.org and find what started in your city. And if you can't make it down here at all, I mean, again, there's tons of things you can be doing right now, not just cheering on the people here, but uh, look into, uh, just go look at Google anonymous tools. Uh, go, to, go to that wiki I mentioned, and, and you know, there's a list of all these procedures, ideas for starting up your own small group. Uh, the best way to take advantage of that time and energy in order to conduct the investigations that the press is incapable of doing or won't do, and then, you know, start to slowly take their place. I mean, information is really our our building block, our ammunition here. So, and that's also the building block of ammunition. It's, it's, the, it's the, the environment that we're fighting in. So everyone needs to learn as much as they can individually about the ways that have proven, proven effective by which to use that information and wield it effectively. Thank you. Um, let's see, I gotta read a few. Second, people, I'm reading. Filtering through this is why I want questions only so I can ask them right off the top. Someone's asking, do you support what is the plan? If so, where do you think that will lead? Uh, you know, I don't know enough about it. I mean, I'm obviously aware of it. I don't know the people running it. I don't, I don't necessarily know what. The devil's always in the details. Uh, I would encourage anybody who's interested just to check it out and see what they have to say. But uh, I'm really sort of. Uh, Sort of specializing in, in again these sort of crowdsourced investigation efforts, which you know maybe I think uh, in general are, are should be a part of everyone's plan. Uh, so that's I mean so I, I would really just go back and encourage you to ask around, uh, take a look at our wiki again and, and uh, wiki ech echelon dot two, and uh, you know whatever else is out there, and just see who has the best plan and see what what ideas you can take to start your own plan. I mean what we need is lots and lots of small groups uh, working loosely together. Uh, trying out different methods of organization, trying out different tactics, and then sharing those. We need, we need to have a, you know, not a central, large central body, but a whole bunch of independent groups that are nonetheless in communication. So, you know, take what you can from what's out there and, uh, and get together with five people you like that you can work with and get started and then put, your, put out a press release. Uh, and that, that's the best way that anyone individually who's watching this today can contribute to this. Okay. What do you propose we do to spread the details of corruption effectively? You know, a lot of that involves uh, accompanying and tying that information to an incident, tying it to an event. In this case, you know, just like the Wall Street deal right here, by virtue of these people showing up the last few days, and by virtue of the cops overreacting, that brings a lot of attention to a lot of messages that are, that are sort of attached to the effort. Uh, you know, with Anonymous, one of our, one of their, uh, you know, most effective techniques was a DDoS, a government website somewhere, and by doing so, that that brings the press attention. And the press is it's not a monolith, but the press is driven by all these individuals who have their own little their own little work lives going on, their own uh, their own battles, uh, their own situations. And in order to you got you got to learn what those what those steps are that, that brings the press's attention. You got to learn what those are and then manipulate those. And uh, so, anytime you want to get information out. Either find someone who knows, who's, who's done it before, who has experience, or just look at what's been done in the past and emulate those. Give me a second. I mean, you know, let me just give you more and more, more example. Something that's worked work in the past is calling up some of these executives, finding their cell phone numbers, not their office numbers, but their home phone numbers, calling them, asking them point blank questions you know the answer to, see if they'll tell the truth and all that, and record it, and then put it on YouTube. I've done that several times, and uh, it's another great way to make sure these people themselves, uh, who are doing what what needs to be stopped, are aware that uh, we want to make it less practical for them to do what they're doing. And uh, shining light, not just on the companies, but the individuals involved, is something that uh, needs to be pursued. Ask more questions. I want to thank him for coming out. Let's see what else we got for him. Uh, 
Did the government do denial of service attacks against an ops? An ops? An ops server? There, there have been denial of service attacks on an ops lots of times. Do you think the government did it? or? You know, it's it's always possible, but it's, it's you don't have to, to come to that conclusion. There's also lots of other possibilities. There are lots of individuals who who aren't ideological and who just want to flex their fucking internet muscles and they like to to, to, to it's happened to some of my access a couple times you know that Ryan Cleary idiot who used to be part of a non-ops when he got butt hurt and left he deployed his DOS software against everybody you know just so I mean we know we know from what we've uncovered that these companies and that the governments you know informally are uh, informally are going after this movement and those in it uh, but that doesn't mean we necessarily draw the conclusion that every single attack is from them uh, you know, they may take their time. Sometimes they're not very creative. Sometimes they are. Uh, and again, the, one of the reasons why I bring attention to this persona management issue and all these other capabilities that are now, now being explored is so important because these things are indetectable once they get going. And the better they get, the harder it is to prove that it's coming from the government or some company. And that includes not just GDOS stuff or that kind of thing or surveillance, but disinformation campaigns that can destroy you know, they, they, they can really do a lot of damage to, to work that a lot of people have, have worked hard to accomplish. So that's why right now we have to put the pressure on the media uh, to, to cover these issues that we keep, keep finding out about from these H.B. Gary emails, uh, including persona management and Romas Coin, misattributable, market, misattributable marketing, all these other capabilities because it's going to be too late. It's, I mean, it's already too late to some extent, and we're never going to stop at all, but we have to make sure that people know about the possibility. Someone actually probably answered it before. Um, where can one find hacktivism ops in order to join and help? Do what? Where can one find hacktivism ops in order to join and help? The best thing, if you just look up a Google anonymous newbie guide or anonymous op op new blood operation new blood, or go to the uh, non op server for instance, uh, irc dot anon uh, dot li right now, if it's currently up and uh, go to the Op New Blood channel and people will help you, they'll give, us, give you documents. But again, there's tons of documents just sitting around online that with, with tons of tools, free tools, ideas, uh, you know, information of people you can come to for help. And uh, my group, Project PM, is always willing to help anyone who wants to start their own group and conduct their own investigation. Uh, again, you can come to Project PM by going to, uh, downloading an IRC client like, like, like Ice Chat and then going to irc.project-pm.org. We've been around for like two years now. We've been doing different things. And uh, our, main, our main purpose, aside from, from this investigation into the uh, intelligence contracting industry, is to really encourage other people to start a large, you know, loose network of small groups. Uh, so we, we'll be happy to help you at every step of the way in that if you want to come ask for help. Let me go. I'll keep it coming. You good? You want to go more? You good? I'm set. Whatever. Done? Alright. We want to thank. Sorry, your name again? Brett? Bar Barrett Brown. Barrett Brown. We want to thank Barrett Brown for stopping by and supporting us. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it.